And hello once again. Welcome to In Your Corner. I'm your host, John Scholes, alongside Savannah Tamarkin, James Fireman from the San Firu Tamarkin Law Firm. In Your Corner is all about disability law and injury law. We are in your corner. We're protecting the little guy, the big guy, whatever guy. You're going to need uh, some guidance, to, uh, you know, trying to traverse these waters of injury law. It's a huge topic. There's lots of pitfalls, but there's also lots of safety nets provided by this show. We'll get to a ton of stuff today, guys, including the top three mistakes you should avoid when dealing with your long-term disability adjuster. That is coming up later on but as we always like to start the show guys with the uh, the week that was something that's been happening in your corner of uh, Savannah how are you pal I'm very good John uh, you know John since we started the show we've had literally hundreds of people contacting us from across BC uh, and Ontario uh, people who have questions and concerns about their long-term disability claims how to deal with the insurance company you know all they know is that they are disabled they can't work and here you have an insurance company that's trying to bully them or cuts them off or denies their claim unjustly despite what their doctors are saying that they can't work and that's the purpose of the show to empower people to tell them that they have options that you know they can fight back that we can help them fight back the insurance companies and that there is a myth out there their insurance companies can do whatever they want yeah. That is absolutely wrong. Insurance company can't just do whatever they want. They have to abide by the law. And as soon as we get involved and help individuals who feel bullied and are cut off and denied long-term long -term disability claims, uh, you know, we get results. We get results. We force insurance companies to pay our clients what they're owed. 1833 in your corner anytime to reach out or help at inyourcorner.ca that is the email address uh week that was what do you got going on well i've had this gentleman that had contacted me and he's a police officer he's been a police officer for uh just over 25 years and he's experienced some issues at home uh his his father passed away recently and he had other issues that had contributed to a mental breakdown really in fact we were contacted by his wife initially and later on we ended up speaking with him and, you know, John, he's been seeing a psychologist uh, on an ongoing basis for the last year or so. And uh, on the advice of HR mm -hmm. uh, at, at the police station and also speaking with his union, he applied for long-term disability. And he gets denied. He gets denied long-term disability, which is not unusual. Many people out there get denied uh, on their first try applying for long-term disability. And uh, we take a look at the documentation. I speak with him, I speak with his wife. I review the various reports from the psychologist. And John, I can tell you unequivocally, he has a case. And it's a case we can pursue against the insurance company. Now, I wanna make sure people understand, we don't deal with workers' compensation type of claims. And even though some of the stressors here are from work, being a police officer, uh, that's, that's not something that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the denial by his insurance company, a private insurance company that does long-term disability coverage. And I've looked at that and I told him, look, if we take on this case, forget about appealing it, right? Because whenever you're denied a long-term disability claim, uh, you are told in that letter of denial that you can appeal that decision. Don't waste your time doing that. I told them that. They're gonna listen to us, they're gonna retain us. And I tell you, within a few months, maybe six months, seven months, maybe up to a year, we will resolve this case. The insurance company will come to the table because they'll have no choice. Because once we start a legal claim against them, in a way, the insurance company will start bleeding money. They'll have to defend the claim f through, through, through their lawyers, through their adjusters. So, you know, this is what I want to tell people, that whether you're a police officer, whether you work in a factory, whether you are a nurse, a teacher, whoever you are, whatever you do, if you are disabled because of an injury, because of an illness, your doctors are telling you you cannot work, your insurance company denies your claim or cuts you off after paying you for X amount of time, we can help you. Just get in touch with us, let us look at the documentation, we will evaluate and tell you within minutes what your legal options are. No, I'm assuming he's unionized, being a police officer. He is unionized, yes. Well, the reason I bring that up is because normally, under most circumstances, if not all, if you're under the employment banner, you can't go outside the union for help, whereas you can when it comes to this type of thing, right? They can go to an outside firm like yours. That's right. What we do is we look at the collective agreement, right. and I'm not going to get into the technical aspects yep. of it, but I can tell you that in many, many instances, teachers, for example, and James has had quite a few clients who are teachers who've been cut off long-term disability and denied, we can help them. And in fact, not only can we help them, uh, it's often foolish to approach the union to help them because unions generally don't have expertise in this area. Unions they, deal with work issues. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to get involved. They want, right. they want to rely on someone who knows what they're doing as well. Mm -hmm. Far more often than not, people in unions um, aren't an issue for us. And we can determine that in five minutes or less. Right. It's just a very quick review of the collective bargaining agreement. So there's no reason not to call and find out. 
inyourcorner.ca is the website, 1833 in your corner, the number to reach out and contact James Savan, a member of the uh, very capable team at the firm. I did mention moments ago uh, employment law and, of course, employment hour at 30. We also uh, do that TV show. You've guest, uh, guest starred on that show with, uh, with Lior many times. But from the radio show side, uh, we take calls in that regard, but we get a lot of crossover with people calling about disability issues as well. So I want to pull a phone call uh, from the employment hour on radio, play it back here, and I know you guys want to comment on it. I was diagnosed with cancer a while ago, um, and I applied for long-term disability through work, so I can take time off to fight it. Last month, the insurance company cut me off, um, and a few days later, I was fired uh, with no severance pay. Um, I'm not really sure what um, I should do. Mm -hmm. Well, John, again, this is something very, very unfortunate, obviously. You're dealing with a lady who, who has cancer. I mean, what could be more obvious than that, that you're unable to work? And then, of course, you don't just have the insurance company picking on you. Now you have your employer picking on you and, and letting you go, firing you. And you're right. I mean, Lior and his team, they deal with these kinds of cases. And there are a lot of people who are watching us who are struggling with their employer and at the same time, They've just been cut off or denied disability from their insurance company. And here's the mistake that many people will make. There are two mistakes. Number one, uh, they will walk away. They'll walk away from their entitlements with respect to their employer because, of course, they're entitled to severance. Yep. That's number one. And number two, they walk away from money that's owed to them by the insurance company. The other mistake that people make, which is really important as well, is that they will go and get legal advice from an employment lawyer here and a disability lawyer over there as opposed to going to the same shop. And why that's important, because there is an interplay between what you end up getting from your employer and what you're owed by the insurance company. And if you're not careful, and if you don't have the same team dealing with both aspects, you're going to end up being the loser. Because, again, what you end up getting from the employer may be deducted from what you get from the insurance company. So you, you want to have a team, the same office, the same people who are looking at all aspects of these issues to make sure that as much money as possible is left in your pocket. You know, James, sometimes I think you'll find at uh, this particular case, it might be a case of, okay, when it comes to the employment, okay, I guess you know, the company knows best, I guess I don't get severance. But when it comes to dealing with the insurance, as Savannah said many times, they feel it's like a David versus Goliath. I can't possibly take on this insurance company. I'm walking away. Yeah, I see that all the time, and that is really the way that the insurance company wants you to right. feel. Um, they use language that feels inaccessible, that, um, you know, it's meant to be confusing for you. It's meant to um, create a feeling like there's nothing that I can do. If they say that this is the way it is, it must be. No, that's exactly wrong. Uh, you are actually holding way more cards than you know that you are. All you need to do is get solid legal advice, give us a call. Far more often than not, and especially if you have doctors that are saying to you, you cannot work, you are going to have a strong case against your insurance company, regardless of what they have told you. You know, well, John, yep. before we start, I just yep. want to say something. Uh, oftentimes, I mean, we get so many stories of success. We, one of the things that we love the most is, is this feeling at the end that our clients are just so happy that they came to us, that we, we were able to get the money that they're owed. But we actually can't talk in that much of a great detail about each particular case because guess what? The insurance company almost always insists on having a confidentiality provision. And the reason for that is because they don't want us going on air and telling them, telling people the truth about those cases and telling them, look, here's what happened in this specific case. So we keep our comments generalized, but I can tell you, if you've been in that situation with us, with another lawyer, and you've reached a settlement, and some of these settlements can be quite big. They can be in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions. Insurance companies are very protective. They don't want word getting around. It's sure. this myth that they're trying to, to build, to emphasize, and to prolong people to, for people to think that they have no power, which the, the, the opposite is exactly true. It is inyourcorner.ca and 1833 in your corner. Take a short break. Come on up. We will talk about the top three mistakes you should avoid when dealing with your long term disability insurer and the impact of social media on a disability claim as well. Stick around. Lots more to go. This is in your corner. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com. You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. 
We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-833-IN-YOUR-CORNER or go to inyourcorner.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to In Your Corner. You want to reach out? one 833 in your corner or inyourcorner.ca. Email is always a good option, which we're going to get to right now. Help at inyourcorner.ca. Guy, uh, I'm going to give this one to you, James. You want to answer uh, Blake's question. It says, when it comes to providing evidence for long-term disability claims, is there a difference in the way insurers look at reports coming from medical doctors versus other practitioners, such as uh, chiropractors, you have psychologists, uh, natural paths for that matter. What do you think? It's a, it's a very difficult question to answer. Right. Um, all other things being equal, it's generally been my experience that they prefer the opinion of a doctor over others. But on a case-to-case -case basis, insurers do things that doesn't seem that don't seem to make a lot of sense. Um, you will have here's an example. I had a client recently whose primary issue was a mental health issue, severe depression, and he had a family doctor that he was seeing on a regular basis. Says unequivocally cannot work. He had a treating psychiatrist cannot work. He also had some physical issues that were preventing him from working at a pretty heavy job. They say his uh, therapist said that he cannot work. So the insurance company, despite all of these opinions from treating healthcare practitioners and two doctors, sends his file. They don't send him to see someone. They send his file to a kinesiologist. And the kinesiologist says, well, no, actually, he can go back to work. He's perfectly fine. Okay, then. <laughs> they prefer the opinion of this kinesiologist over the family doctor, over the psychiatrist, over his treating a therapist. So I can't tell you what an insurance company is going to do on any individual case. What I can say, though, is in the long run, if this case had to go to court, a judge is certainly going to prefer the opinion of a doctor, especially a treating doctor. A doctor who has been treating you for a number of years in particular, who knows you well, who understands your condition, their opinion is the one that's going to be relied on in the end. Well, it's, it just seems kind of weird, Savannah. It's not even a physical exam. Just paper was sent to a kinesiologist. I'm not saying anything wrong with kinesiologists. They're, they're well-skilled and educated, but you got a whole team of doctors already for this person. What, are they, what ground are they standing on? John, we talked about this before, and we're going to keep emphasizing this. Insurance companies make a lot of mistakes. Adjusters make a lot of mistakes. They're not omnipotent. You know, again, it's that myth that everything they do is right and they've sent your case to a kinesiologist or to this person or that person, and they crank out a letter then saying to you, you're no longer on claim or we right. deny your claim. Don't take that at face value. Don't take that at face value. If your doctors are saying that you cannot work, that you are too sick, you are too injured, then you have a case. Don't back away from that. And if you back away from that, that's on you. That's money that's owed to you that right. you are giving as a gift to the insurance company by letting them keep it. InYourCorner.ca, the website, one eight three three in your corner as well. I mentioned it. We'll get to now the top three mistakes you should avoid when dealing with your long-term disability adjuster. Why did we come up with this today? Because there's a ton of them, right? Yeah, there are more than just top three. Right. There are top thousand, but let's start with the top three. <laughs> uh, first one, letting your guard down and treating your adjuster as your pal. He's your buddy. He's your friend because they're good at that. They're good at it, right? I mean, how, how many times have we seen that? All uh, the it's all the time. All the time. And, and the thing that's interesting is that people get... They get uh, comfortable with yep. the adjuster, and I understand why. And by the way, let's not paint all adjusters with the same brush. Many of them are very, very good people, but they have a job to do. And they, just like most people, want to be liked, and, and they will feel sympathy. But here's the thing. The adjuster, even though their job is to take care of you and to follow the policy, ultimately, they answer to a master, and that master is their boss, it's the people on top, it's corporate headquarters, right? It's the insurance company. So you have to be extremely careful 
not to let your guard down with your adjuster, not to simply assume that that adjuster is your friend. Don't tell that adjuster that last week, you know, you came back from Cancun and you did so and so. Uh, you know, I'm not saying you lied to the insurance company, but I'm saying be very careful what you tell your adjuster, how you deal with your adjuster, what you reveal to your adjuster, because at the end of the day, they are working for the insurance company. And, and I'll tell you, John, the adjusters really want it to seem as though it's a very friendly, casual relationship. But if you read through any of the insurance files after the fact, after the, the person has been denied and you're reading through this claims file, you'll see a transcript of the conversation and it'll be, you know, the adjuster um, will call and say, how you doing? And, you know, as you would say to, you know, a friendly acquaintance or a friend, oh, I'm doing okay. Good. Doing okay. In the notes, claimant says he is okay. Yeah, that, that, that is what you see all the time. So you yeah. have to have your guard up. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that you should be rude or impolite. No, not at all. But I'm saying ca be careful what you say because everything can be recorded. Everything. So you really have to have your guard up at all times. The next one, everything being recorded kind of dovetails into our next point of the top three mistakes you should avoid when dealing with your LTD adjuster, and that is not, not confirming all conversations in writing. That pretty much goes for life, right? Yeah, th I, this is a really big thing that you can do to help yourself down the road. Uh, so the technique here is whenever you are having a conversation uh, with your adjuster, and generally they're going to prefer to have all communications by phone, mm -hmm. Um, if that is the case and they won't, uh, you know, they won't communicate with you primarily in email, then what you need to do is have a pad of paper and a pen by the phone handy. And any time you are talking with your adjuster, take notes. Take notes of the substance of everything that is said. When that conversation is over, put it in an email. You don't have to try and color the conversation at all. All you need to do is put the facts of what was said. You said this, I said this. Yeah. And then you send that email to the adjuster confirming what your conversation was. That way, down the road, nobody can deny that this is what happened. And if they're going to do it, they're going to have to do it right away. That is protecting you down the road. It's also sending a signal to the adjuster that you're on the ball and that you're keeping track and that there is a record. And it's going to make them a lot more cautious about trying to cut you off. So you're not only protecting, protecting yourself down the road, you're putting yourself in a better position right now. That's a wickedly proactive move. So if I handed you 99 cases, how many people actually go to that extent? Not, they should be, but how many actually do it? Very few, um, but it's not none. Um, certainly, uh, if you're, you know, out of 100, I would say probably 5 to 10 wow. are doing it. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that that number grows as people continue to listen to our radio show and watch a television show. Yeah. But it's not something that occurs to most people. And the reason for that, really, is because of the first issue that we talked about here, is that the adjusters are trying to create a friendly relationship. And so you're, you know, generally not going to be on guard unless you know to be unless you've been told you right. need to be on guard. And if you are, then you're going to have the pad of, of paper out and the pen out, and you're going to be ready. Top three mistakes you should avoid when dealing with your LTD adjuster. And number three is right here, accepting everything the adjuster says without question. It's gospel, right? That's something that, again, you know, is very common. And it's common because it's natural if you think about it. You have an adjuster assigned to your case. That person, in a way, is in a position of authority, yep. in a position of power over you. There is a power imbalance. You are sick. You are there uh, asking, essentially, for them to honor the policy, to pay you what you are owed under the policy. And so whatever the adjuster says goes, right? No, absolutely not. And that's absolutely very crucial. Let me give you an example. Uh, I, I've, I have quite a few situations, people contacting me, telling me, look, the adjuster is telling me I have to try to go back to work. I've been off from work for a year, for six months, a year and a half, whatever. You have to go back to work, they say. No, you don't. Now you feel guilty. You, you feel, first of all, you feel guilty. They make you feel like you are, you know, trying to... You're a slacker. Uh, yeah, you're a slacker. You're trying you're to maybe be fraud. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. No, that's not the case. If you are disabled from working, if you feel that you cannot go back to work, and more importantly, or as importantly, I should say, if your doctors have not cleared you to go back to work, there is no reason whatsoever right. why you should be forced and coerced into going to work.
Yeah, there, there are really two types of issues that I would divide this into. Okay. So the first type is anything the adjuster says about your health and your capabilities. In that situation, no, you rely on your doctor, as Savan was just saying. They are the ones that you listen to about any health care decisions, and you follow their advice, regardless of what your adjuster is saying, frankly, regardless of what your lawyer is saying. Your doctor is the one that you go to okay. for medical advice. But there are also things that they will say that you may question about how the policy works. And in those situations, if they're saying something to you that doesn't seem to make sense, that doesn't seem to be right, then ask, ask the adjuster, say, where does it say this in the policy? Can you please point me to the specific provision in the policy that allows you to force me to go back to work or to change, you know, if they're saying that you have to change who your treating doctor is, which they're not entitled to do, um, ask them to show you where is this provision in the policy? Where does it say that you're allowed to do that? And again, do that in writing, please. Make sure that there's a record of that. Again, these are just the top three mistakes you can make you want to avoid to reach out and uh, capture the other thousand. You want to reach out to these guys at any time. 1-833 in your corner and in your corner .ca. We'll take a short break and we'll get into the impact of social media on that disability claim and the impact of a job loss on that disability payments as well. That is all coming up. Stick around in your corner continues. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors, they've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated, but there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-833-IN-YOUR-CORNER, or go to inyourcorner.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to In Your Corner. John Skoll, Savan Tamark, and James Fireman from the firm. Uh, answering a lot of questions here we have so far. We talked about the three mistakes to avoid when dealing with your adjuster. Now I want to move on to something else, social media and your, your claim as well. Anytime you want to, to drop a question to these guys, you can either do it on the phone call, email, or mydisabilityquestions.com. Again, mydisabilityquestions.com. Fantastic resource uh, for doing that. We'll get to one. Um, is an insurance company justified in cutting off a person's disability claim because of social media posts? that the disabled person has made. For example, uh, the person is on disability because of an illness, but their pictures show them you know, looking happy and participating at a, at a wedding, for instance. Well, in that particular example, I would say almost certainly not. But when you're talking about social media, there's a lot of different uh, ways that it can play out. Okay. If you're talking about someone who is saying that they have a severe back injury and they can't get out of bed, and you know, then there's pictures of them at this wedding dancing, and then the next day they're you know mountain biking in the gym, clean and pressing. I, I'm not going to be too upset with an insurance company that decides yeah. to cut that person off. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. But on the other hand, where it becomes much more difficult is when we're dealing with mental health claims, um, especially around depression. Um, and anxiety, you know, a lot of times people will have a great amount of difficulty going out of the house, putting themselves in social situations, but almost in every case, and I'm not a doctor, but this is what I see, in virtually every single case, we're going to have the doctors advising them that, you know, the best thing for you is get to try there. and get out there and try and put yourselves in those situations yeah. and do what you can. And, you know, the fact that you go out and do that, and especially if it's an important event like a wedding, um, you know, that's, you know, to your benefit. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're following your doctor's advice. And it's not as though because you have an ongoing disability claim that you're not allowed to go out and try Try to enjoy your life. You have to follow your doctor's advice, and if your doctor is saying, don't do this and don't do that, then by all means, do not do them. But can you go out to you know, a family wedding and try and enjoy yourself? Absolutely. Now, does that mean that your insurance company isn't still going to try and make something out of that? Of course they will. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they're right, and it doesn't mean that if they were to cut you off, that ultimately, if you were to bring a claim based on that denial or that cutoff, that you wouldn't be successful, you would. 
Don't you get a little bit of leeway as well, being social media? I'm going to you know, pick on Instagram or Facebook, for instance, that generally it's, you know, it's all sweetness and light. It's shiny, happy people. People put their positive stuff on social media generally to begin with, right? Y absolutely, John. But here's the thing to understand. Insurance companies are not looking for the truth necessarily. <laughs> They're looking at reasons that they can give you or excuses for cutting you off. Right. The first thing that happens when somebody comes to me and there is a letter that outlines all the stuff the insurance company found out, whether it's through social media research or surveillance or anything like that, and I've had those cases where literally the denial letter was five pages long, just enumerating all the stuff that they found. And I would go through each point with the individual and I would ask them to explain it to me. And as long as the explanations actually made sense, I would fire back at the insurance company and I would push back and I would fight back. And you know, there's a case that comes to mind about a gentleman that was earning quite a lot. He was a very high earner, and he suffered from, from significant depression, had a lot of, of issues, had treating psychologists, psychiatrists, etc. And the insurance company did do research on social media, and they had surveillance. They, they, they had all, these, all this ammunition that they mm. threw at him, but his case was legit. And he was following doctor's advice in terms of going out and doing some photography, you know, things that were very therapeutic. And we ended up starting a legal claim, and within about, I think it was seven and a half, eight months or so, we achieved a settlement with the insurer wow, nice. for, for six figures. So again, don't assume that if the insurance company simply denies your claim or starts you know, picking and choosing what they use from their social media research that you have absolutely no recourse. You absolutely do. At the very least, get the advice from us. Mm -hmm. Run this by us so we can tell you Again, in a few minutes, at no cost, whether or not you have any legal options, any legal recourse against the insurance company. John, sorry, yep. before we move off of social media, I think it's important to make the point, and I'm not going to suggest that anybody you know, shut down their social media account. I don't think that's realistic. But be aware that it is something that is going to be viewed. Your insurance company is going to have a look at it. And every social media platform has its own privacy settings. Right. Make use of them. Go through those. And ideally, you're going to make your account private, and you're going to make sure that you're the only one that has the authority to post anything to your account. If you're on Facebook, you're the only one that has the authority to post anything to your wall. If anyone else tries to, you have to approve it first. Nice. And that way you can be careful and monitor, monitor what is put up on your wall and make sure that you're comfortable with everything that's there. Guys, I want to wrap up the last couple of minutes with an email. Again, it is help at inyourcorner.ca. Scott writes in. Scott says, what happens to a disabled uh, employee's long-term disability benefits if their employer lets them go while they're on disability? Uh, do their disability benefits end upon termination of their employment? So that's very, a very, very common question that no. we get. The answer is no. Okay. As long as you became disabled while you had disability coverage, okay, as long as that happens, it doesn't matter what happens with your employment with respect to your coverage, meaning you're not going to stop getting disability payments because your employer fired you or because your employer uh, went out of business. That's not going to happen. That said, again, circling back to the beginning of the show, if you are let go while you are disabled, not only do you have a claim for severance and entitlements that Leora often speaks about, but you may have human rights damages. And again, that's very important to understand because whatever you get by way of severance from your employer, your insurance company may get credit for but they can't get credit for a human right, a breach of your human rights, damages you get for that. So again, that's why we say anyone that is in that situation, anyone that has been let go is on LTD or was claiming LTD at the time, uh, if you are in that situation, you should speak with us because we have employment lawyers and disability lawyers all under the same roof. And we're going to give you the advice on both fronts to make sure we maximize the amount of money that comes to your pocket that remains in your pocket is it the same type of thing james where the insurance company is just hoping you're going to bail oh absolutely Turtle. yeah absolutely um you know there any excuse um, that they have to cut you off they're going to try and do that and if they can point their finger at this or at that they will try um, and so the best thing you can do if you're not sure give us a call give us a call it is a free consultation you have absolutely nothing to lose by making the call. Um, I'm more than happy, and Savan's more than happy, and our entire team is always happy to speak with someone with no obligation, someone who's just looking to get some information. I do this at least a dozen times a week. I not will bad. speak with someone who isn't looking to start a claim, at least not right now. They just want some information, and that's perfectly fine. 
Done for another day, guys. You've done a, a phenomenal job. You want to reach out anytime. Again, mydisabilityquestions.com is where I got some of those questions. It is help at inyourcorner.ca. And there's always the website as well, inyourcorner.ca, to find out where you can find the radio show that we've been doing for years and more TV shows that we've done in the past. And finally, 1-833-IN-YOUR-CORNER. 1-833-IN-YOUR-CORNER is the number to reach out anytime. And talk to the guys. Till next time, this has been In Your Corner. We'll catch you again.